Okay, so you have acne. You go to the pharmacy, you want to figure out which are the most effective ingredients in there. I'm gonna talk about the top seven that I find to be most effective as well as most common. When you go to the pharmacy, the first thing you oftentimes see in the acne um, section are, is benzoyl peroxide. Benzoyl peroxide has been around for a really long time. It's known to kill bacteria. It can also break open some of those pesky little whiteheads that you have. However, it's not for everyone because benzoyl peroxide is actually a little bit irritating. Second ingredient, retinols. You see these everywhere, oftentimes in the acne section, oftentimes in the brightening and anti-aging section. Retinols are probably the single most effective ingredients over the long term to prevent acne. However, in the short term, it can cause irritation and not everyone's skin can handle it. So before you launch into using lots of retinol, you do wanna see a dermatology specialist or dermatologist and actually talk with them about how your skin is before you start the retinol process. Retinol has many features. It's actually a vitamin A. It goes from retinol to adapalene, which is another ingredient we'll talk about, all the way up to prescription strength retinoids. And then of course, we've all heard of Accutane, which is a version of the retinols that you're using topically. So something that's very effective, but you do need to um, see a specialist to figure out the nuances of what is best for your skin. Third thing, salicylic acid. You see this all the time in face washes, but some topicals also have salicylic acid in them. Salicylic acid is actually a beta hydroxy acid, which is really good for breaking open some of those comedones. Comedones are basically clogged pores. If they are closed, they form the whiteheads. If they're open, they form the blackheads. And so it's very effective for this. But again, a lot of these ingredients can cause irritation and some can actually make the acne worse depending on which type Type, and we always have to be aware of the possibility of a purging process that can happen in the meantime. The next ingredient, glycolic acid. Glycolic is a fantastic ingredient. It is an alpha hydroxy acid. Alpha hydroxy acids are really good for brightening and for exfoliation. So a lot of alpha hydroxy acids are actually used as chemical peels, but they do exist in the lotion form as well as wash form. And this is fantastic if you know how to use it right. So you have to know your skin type, you definitely want to see a specialist before you launch into overutilizing a lot of these ingredients. The next one, adapalene, I mentioned this before. Technically, it's a retinol. The third generation retinol that it is, you have to be kind of careful. It used to be um, prescription strength only, but actually has become um, something that's over the counter at the lower strength. It's very effective, but again, very irritating for some people's skin. So if you have a history of eczema on your face or rosacea, you have to be careful when you use a lot of these ingredients because they will cause irritation and potential worsening of the acne. So be careful. Next thing, azelaic acid. Azelaic acid is a dicarboxylic acid. I love this acid. I use it for acne, but also prescribe it um, at high concentrations for things like rosacea. It's a great anti-aging ingredient. It decreases oil secretion. It's not too irritating. So for all the ingredients that we mentioned prior to this, I actually think that azelaic acid at lower concentrations is extremely safe, very to well tolerated, tends not to cause the purging, and I, I love it for many different reasons. However, it doesn't mean it can't cause it. People with very sensitive skin still find that the azelaic acid can be a little bit drying. So you have to kind of know your skin type, whether it's combination, whether it's oily, whether it's dry, to know what is the best uh, version of it for you. Lastly, um, niacinamide. Niacinamide is a secondary ingredient that's used in a lot of different components of face washes or lotions. And a lot of sunscreens actually contain niacinamide as well. I like niacinamide, but um, it's vitamin B3. It works really well by decreasing oil secretion. However, in many cases, it actually does cause redness and irritation. I actually had this experience using it on my own. I had a sunscreen that had niacinamide and my skin over time um, turned uh, rosy and a little bit red. And I suspect it was the niacinamide in there over time that caused some of the irritation there. So with all these ingredients, they can be very, very helpful but you do have to know your skin type and your sensitivity level before you launch into using any of these. And a lot of these things are sold in combination or they're in different parts of your skincare routine, but if you combine all of them together, it's likely to be too irritating for what we wanna achieve and it can actually backfire. So everything in moderation, these are great ingredients, but they can be used solo or in minor combinations, unlikely to be beneficial if you use them across the board in all these cases. So hope this was helpful. Thank you again for joining. If you'd like to hear more, subscribe, and you can see more here.